Welshman Tom Price was one of racing's late bloomers. He only entered his first competitive race aged 20, but his talent was without question, and by 1975, his speed and tenacity, especially in wet conditions, landed him a drive at Formula One team Shadow. Despite interest from Lotus, Price was loyal to Shadow and took two podiums and a pole position during his four seasons with the team, as well as winning the non-championship Race of Champions at Brands Hatch in 1975. Price was known as being an uncomplicated, down-to-earth character, but on track, he was seen as a true star in the making. Sadly, it was never to be. At the 1977 South African Grand Prix, Price was killed when he hit a young steward running across the track. He was just 27 years old. Stefan Beloff's Formula One story is one of precocious talent, tragically lost from the world of motor racing long before it had the chance to be realized. The German's incredible speed and fearless racing style marked him out as not just a potential race winner, but maybe a future world champion. The rain-soaked 1984 Monaco Grand Prix will forever be remembered as the moment another prodigy, Brazilian Ayrton Senna, truly arrived in Formula One. When the race was stopped early, many thought Senna's attempt to overhaul race leader Alain Prost had been unfairly curtailed. But while Senna had been catching Prost, Tyrrell driver Beloff had been catching Senna. And the German's mastery of the slippery conditions meant that he may well have caught Senna and Prost in the closing stages, if the race had run its full distance. One year later, Stefan Beloff was killed in a sports car accident at Spa. It was a tragic loss, and Formula One never got to see the realization of the young German's race-winning potential. To win a race in Formula One, it's crucial that the raw talent of the driver is matched by a car with race-winning potential. Jean-Pierre Jarier's pure speed was undeniable, but the Frenchman spent the mid-70s racing for midfield battlers, Shadow. However, mid-season upgrades on the Shadow DN5 propelled Jarier to a stunning pole position at the 1975 Brazilian Grand Prix. And on race day, he looked set for victory. At one point, leading the field by 20 seconds. But a fuel system failure brought a cruel end to his charge to glory. The Frenchman pulled over on lap 32 and instead watched home favorite Jose Carlos Paz grab his maiden Formula One race victory. Jarier's moment seemed to arrive in 1978 when he was called up to Lotus to fill the seat of Ronnie Peterson after his tragic death at the Italian Grand Prix. In Canada, Jarier put the Lotus 79 on pole and on race day led the field with ease until brake failure forced him to retire. Again, he was left to watch a rival take their maiden victory, this time in the form of Ferrari's Gilles Villeneuve. Jarier did eventually stand on the podium for Tyrrell in 1979, but a race win never happened and his undoubted talent would remain unfulfilled for the rest of his F1 career. When Tolman driver Derek Warwick replaced Alain Prost at Renault in 1984, many observers thought that the well-respected Brit would soon become a Formula One race winner. Warwick took a pair of P2 finishes in his first season with Renault, but instead of being on the cusp of glory, the French outfit was at the start of a decline. As is so often the case in Formula One, timing is everything, and Warwick would come to regret his decision to turn down a switch to Williams Honda at the start of the 1985 season. That year, Honda's engines powered Williams drivers Nigel Mansell and Keke Rosberg to two race victories apiece, as Renault headed in the opposite direction. The French manufacturer decided to leave F1 at the end of the season, leaving Warwick without a drive for 1986. A potential seat for Warwick in a Lotus car of race-winning potential was vetoed by the team's number one driver and future world champion, Ayat and Senna. And with that, Warwick's best opportunities in Formula One looked to be gone. Warwick later returned with Brabham and then Arrows. In 1989, a pit stop error in Brazil and a blown engine in Canada twice cost him the chance of victory. Warwick went on to win Le Mans in 1992, but for him, and like so many other great drivers, that first Formula One victory was just never meant to be. 
With a record of 12 podiums for constructors such as Ferrari and McLaren, Sweden's Stefan Johansson had the speed and talent to compete with the best Formula One drivers of the 1980s. And he came mightily close to winning a race too. Fuel limit regulations caused chaos at the 1985 San Marino Grand Prix, and Johansson cashed in as other cars ran out of fuel, driving his Ferrari from 15th on the grid to take the race lead. But Johansson's golden opportunity would soon end in heartbreak, when the fuel in his Ferrari also ran out, just three laps from the chequered flag. In Canada later that year, Johansson finished a tantalizing two seconds behind his Ferrari teammate and race winner, Michele Alboreto. And that was as good as it got for the talented Swede. Romain Grosjean is another driver who knows exactly how it feels to be a matter of seconds away from winning a race in Formula One. The mercurial Frenchman was driving for Lotus when he finished just two seconds behind Lewis Hamilton in Canada in 2012, and a meagre six seconds behind Sebastian Vettel's Red Bull in Austin the following year. Although the race win never came, a respectable record of 10 podiums helped Grosjean make some incredible memories in the sport. Non-championship Formula One races were a prominent part of the motor racing calendar deep into the 1980s. Rather than points, drivers competed for prize money and prestige. French driver Jean Berra was a national hero and had a brilliant non-championship record, winning five races in the 1957 season alone and 11 in total. His record in the Formula One championship failed to reach the same heights, though the Frenchman did come close. Berra finished second or third a total of nine times, including five podiums in the 1956 season. And despite driving for race-winning teams such as Maserati and Ferrari, Berra never got to be a race winner himself. In a highly respected 12-year F1 career, Martin Brundle proved that he could mix it with the best on track as well, without ever realizing his dream of a Grand Prix win. The British driver often found himself in underfunded teams driving underpowered cars. His best opportunity for glory came with Benetton in the 1992 season, driving alongside future world champion Michael Schumacher. He chalked up five podium finishes in what became his most successful F1 season. But it was Brundle's teammate Schumacher who tasted victory that season, with a win at the Belgian Grand Prix. For the German, it was a sign of the championship winning success that would soon come. For Brundle, his time at Benetton represented his best shot at glory and the peak of his F1 career. Germany's Nick Heidfeld drove in 183 Grand Prix for six different constructors in an illustrious F1 career that spanned the noughties. Quick Nick was a model of consistency and at one point held the record for the most consecutive race finishes with an incredible 33 race completion sequence. But Heidfeld also broke a more bittersweet Formula One record. Despite finishing on the podium 13 times, the German holds the unenviable title of being the driver with the most podiums never to win a race. His brushes with glory came first with Sauber in 2001, three times with Williams in 2005, and eight times with BMW Sauber from 2006 to 2009. Perhaps his most gut-wrenching near-miss came in Montreal in 2008, when his younger teammate Robert Kubica capitalized on a quick BMW Sauber car to qualify on the front row and claim a maiden race victory, as Heidfeld courageously drove from eighth on the grid to finish second. A final third-place finish for Renault in 2011 again saw Heidfeld on the podium. But the top step and that elusive Formula One race victory would stay forever out of reach. New Zealander Chris Amon was a Le Mans 24-hour race winner in 1966, before being crowned champion in the 1969 Tasman Series, beating the likes of future world champion Jochen Rindt. But for all his talent, Amon was also one of the unluckiest drivers of all time, losing race-winning opportunities time and again thanks to poor car reliability. In 1967, he took four third-placed finishes for Ferrari, but lost out on victory at the United States Grand Prix due to a lack of engine oil. In 1968, 
fuel pump issues on his Ferrari 312 cost him race-winning opportunities in Spain and Canada, and despite leading in Spa, he was forced to retire with a hole in his radiator. The Italian Grand Prix of 1971 saw Eamon start from pole, but his battle for a maiden F1 win ended when he accidentally pulled off his whole visor instead of just a strip. And in France, a year later, he suffered a puncture when leading the race and seemingly driving to victory. In 96 Grand Prix, Chris Eamon stood on the podium 11 times and is widely regarded as the best Formula One driver never to win a race.